Hey there. It's Monday night, a cool evening here in Los Angeles for once. But, Lovely. Yes. But tonight, another great show. We move from personalities and music from last week, which was a great show. Mm -hmm. Tim Tippett is our guest tonight, and we're going to talk about uh, his career, and we're going to talk a lot of VO Studio Tech. A VO Tech guru, by the way. Oh, yes, indeedy. All right. And we've got a couple more things from Nam yep. and your tech questions. So stay tuned. Voice over body shop. Coming right up. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success, the VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by voiceactorwebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Well, hopefully not too much BS tonight. But, no, this uh, will be minimal BS tonight. That's right. So, uh, but Tim Tippett is going to be joining us and we're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff because he's a, he's a, a VO tech guru because he has all those racks of equipment and stuff like that to make him say, he, he actually sounds like this, but he uses all this equipment <laughs> to make sure that, uh, you know, he can, he can sound like he's, you know, he's got a really deep voice, That's right? <laughs> you know, but so he's got to be good at it. Yeah. He knows his stuff. Yeah. Right, and good. yes, we also have some stuff from Nam. What are we looking at tonight? Uh, we got video from Smash Mouse. Smash Mouse. Who we met last year, but we'll actually see the product this year that they're, that they're beta testing or whatever, prototyping. And we also have video from, what was the other one? Ron, It'll be a surprise. Ron, no, oh, Ron, no, no, Ron. Ron, Ron Knight from, <laughs> uh, from Jacovi Acoustics. Which yeah, really, really cost-effective acoustical panels that look really good, actually. So. Yeah. Excited about that. Yeah. And, a, and an old pro, Ron Knight, whom some people who've been around for a little while might remember. He's a coach too, right? He's also a VO coach. Yeah. That was a cool surprise. Yes. Yeah, so, and, uh, and we have a couple of tech questions. Paul Stefano is in the, uh, the chat room tonight. Yes. He is in Facebook and the VOBS yeah, chat right. room, both monitoring, looking for your questions. Yeah. So if you have a question, go into the chat room, tell Paul what you want to, to ask, what question you want to ask mm -hmm. and put a note question. Yeah, and that will Q help you colon or something. Right. So it stands yeah. out, especially, you know, if you've got a tech question for us or once we start talking to Tim and you've got some specific questions for him, uh, throw them in there and we will make sure that we read those questions. We will. We promise you know, whether we understand them or not. <laughs> anyway, now it's time for voice over extra news, all the information you need for a successful voiceover career. You know, you've probably heard or read about the New York City area voice talent and coach who's been accused of sexual assault and harassment while coaching them and producing their demos in the studio. This occurred over a period of 18 years. And believe it or not... <laughs> no, no, no. Push it down to the bottom there. No, 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 no. 
Take two. Uh, Let's do it from the top. Please. From the top of the from news. From the top, we're going to do an edit. Okay. Can you straighten it out a little bit? Okay, from right, yeah, straighten it out. There we go. Perfect. Take two. Teleprompters are so worth it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Okay, here's the news. You know, you've probably heard or read about the New York City area voice coach and talent coach who's been accused by dozens of women of sexual harassment and assault while coaching them and producing their demos in his studio. This occurred over a period of 18 years, believe it or not. And while during this time, the women confided privately about the attacks, they became emboldened by the Me Too uh, movement to come forward in public with their stories. Yeah, a CNN article last Thursday. CNN. CNN. <laughs> uh, kicked this into high gear, and VoiceOver Extra has covered it in more depth for the VO industry. By the way, the website of Peter Rofay's PDR voice coaching is no longer available online. And web searches of his name quickly reveal articles about the harassment accusations, plus mention an NYPD investigation into those accusations. In the wake of all this, our question tonight is, what would you do if you felt sexually harassed in a voiceover studio or in any work or personal environment? VoiceOver Extra invited Rafay's victims to share their advice to other women on how to react to and emotionally process harassment and assault. Here's the highlight advice. Here is a highlight of advice given by Sarah Eslin, who uh, one of the five to respond for this article. Mm. Know their game. Sarah advises, and realize that it is not your fault. And what is their game, Sarah? Sarah says that sexual predators in the arts, like Peter Rofay, speak the language of the actress. They know what triggers the actress. They know that an actress wants to go to deep emotional places in order to perform truthfully. If that monster can find that actress nerve in you, that desire to be good, real, and true in performance, then he knows he has you and can manipulate that desire. It can tell you that you aren't quite there yet, that you sound inhibited, that you can go deeper, get the job, and then suddenly, well, we'll censor this for the webcast. But you leave the assault wondering if it was truly an assault, and you bury the memory for decades, creating a sort of scene missing in the narrative of your career. Hmm. Sarah's advice, know their game better than they do, she says. Recognize when it happened or when it's about to happen. Stand your ground and always remember that it is never, ever your fault. There's much more to learn from these women in the article now at voiceoverextra.com, along with them, an email address for sharing your own experience and questions confidentially. This and hundreds of additional VO how-to articles await for you now at VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And that mm. was a shocking story to be sitting in an airport this week and going, no. Yeah, I know. I, I it, first saw it broken by um, Heather Costa, yep. who was posting the story around the net. I, I saw it on the, the Facebook Twisted Wave group the first time. Right. Um, and it's heartbreaking. I mean, it is. I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess it was a matter of time, unfortunately, that this would hit our business as well. But it's really unfortunate for everybody involved. Yeah. You know, it's it's horrible for all the women. It's horrible for the career. It's horrible for the family of of Peter. It's it's, mm. it's just a bad thing all around. Yeah. So it's all about trust. I mean, in in our business, we have to deal with people in very close environments and stuff. People have to trust us. Fortunately, we're very trustworthy. Yeah, I mean, if, if we lose that trust and we cross that line one, one time, that can mean any our careers. Right. I mean, Dan and I know that we work in close, close proximity to people on a regular basis. In their closets. In their closets. Next to their underwear. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it is, it is a, a, a delicate space to work in, and we have to be absolutely impeccable in how we behave yeah. in those spaces. I mean, there's no... There is no gray area, ever. Right. <laughs> yeah. For the rest of you guys out there, behave for crying out loud. Be gentle with it. Looks re Please. Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what's new in One tech? better news. Well, <laughs> oh, that's a cool this little is, toy. This, you may think this is completely unrelated, and you've probably seen tons and tons of Bluetooth speakers out there. I just thought this one kind of popped up as a, as a kind of a cool gadget to have for, well, really anybody that's looking for a Bluetooth speaker but also maybe people that are looking for something to take on the road with them that they could actually trust as sounding good enough 
to edit audio yeah. on. Yeah. Alexa, what's the weather? It no, is not, not one of those. Darn. <laughs> not at this price. <laughs> this speaker from the company uh, S Bode, S B O D E, found it on Amazon. Where one else? Of those, one of those. You odd, live on Amazon. I, I love Amazon. <laughs> Um, I found it on there. It's, it's a, it's a very inexpensive, I roughly $42 at the time that I found it, uh, Bluetooth speaker. What makes it cool? Well, first of all, it sounds really good. Um, it's got good audio quality. Um, it has all the features you need Power on. and stuff Bluetooth you don't, mode. and stuff you don't Shut need. Shut up. And, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can get it to play some music here. I had some music queued up that will get us flagged on YouTube. I'm sure. Um, it's not connected to my phone now, even though, of course, I wish it was working. Hang Trust me, second. I heard it before. It was it sounds it sounded pretty, really good. It sounds pretty darn good. It sounds like you're listening to someone's voice coming out of the speaker. Device which is, paired. I Whoa. love that. I love that Ooh. accent. <laughs> Device paired. See if it'll play the music. Now. Hey, somebody had to do the voiceover for that. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go to the beginning. This is yeah, just voice. Oh. oh, yeah, babe. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Sounds yeah. like the Dr. Said, Pepper guy. All I, all I need is a taste of your love, babe. Come on, give it to me. All I, all I need is your liquid love, babe. Come on, give it to me. I just found it pretty remarkable how natural voices sound coming out of this. Yeah, no, it sounds fine. So you're just, saying you can, if you're in a pinch, it, it could actually be used as a studio mic. Throw it in your bag, take it when you go to a hotel, when it's time to cut audio, plug this in. Unlike the new Apple HomePod, this has an, a line in, so you can plug <laughs> this into anything. You probably Maybe you've heard about the new Apple iPod. I was going to talk about it tonight, but frankly... It's totally half-baked. It doesn't work with anything except the iPhone or the iPad. It doesn't work with Spotify. It doesn't work with a lot of stuff. It's yeah. a cool speaker, $350, you know, bragging device. You know, it's just, look at my new speaker. This thing is useful, $42. It floats. It's Ooh. waterproof. I listen to music in the morning. I listen to podcasts. I stick it in the shower. It's, it's really a great little device. It even has an extra trick up its sleeve, which I can't imagine any of you guys are ever yeah. using. It has SD a micro card? has a micro SD card reader. Oh my goodness! So you can stick a card in there <laughs> and, and a line in and... and a line in, and there's the charging port. It's wow. got a little waterproof cap, and like you needed more. But wait, there's more. No. Device disconnected. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, but yeah, but <laughs> anyway, I think we get the point. I hit the wrong button. No, it okay. does. Power off. Well, it turns off. Okay. I, I'm now forgetting how to use it, of course, because we're doing this live on the air. But it also does FM radio. Ooh. Power yes. On. It has an FM Bluetooth radio. mode. FM radio mode. Yes, oh. it has an FM radio. Which I haven't FM made FM use of mode. because where I live in, you, you in can't Japan, get I can't get any FM radio zero. at all. But it has an actual FM radio which is a rare find to find in devices like this. So it's really multi-versatile. Last thing I'll say is it also does stereo pairing. So if you buy two of these, you press this little extra button, and it is now a stereo pair of monitors for listening to music. I don't know if that's useful for editing voiceover, but if you want to use it for listening to music, it's really cool. And don't confuse it for an energy drink. So No, no, and it really, it's <laughs> neat. Oh, and for the audio geeks, it has passive radiators. Oh. Each end is a little... Piston, that, that's an actual passive radiator that helps the speaker respond better right. to bass frequency. So All right. that's my cool little tech find of the week. It has maybe minimal to do with voiceover, oh. but it, it could be a cool gadget to have with you on the road. And it costs a fraction of the stuff from Bose and ultimate ears and all, all right. the other stuff let's not wear out the geekiness yet tonight oh we, we have a lot of geekiness warming to up. go to warming up yeah. well and i'm catching up to your beard here too oh yeah you're growing are you doing a little something something i there? have i'm in a small play that i have to be look somewhat biblical very nice how so, far are you going to go with it uh to the end of february and then that's it. No, I know. I mean, like, how long is it? Uh, we'll see how long. Well, it goes. However long it gets, yes, I guess. That's right. Just turn this little <laughs> crank back here, and it will keep growing, like a Play-Doh yeah. machine. All right. 
All righty. What's well, coming up? Yeah, well, we've got lots of stuff coming up. Tim Tippett's in a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. And your tech question's coming right up. And a NAM video? And a NAM video. Right after this. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> You're... Learn the latest in voiceover technology, business, and good old-fashioned acting. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. Hey, will 2018 be the year you take your voiceover practice to the next level? If not, you can go back to checking your email or your voicemail or whatever while this commercial is airing. I also think there's some leftover tie somewhere in the back of your fridge. Anyway, but if you're serious about dramatically upping your level of success, I want you to go to a very special URL. That's VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO, two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. Join the hundreds of voiceover practitioners around the world who have decided to do something positive and invest in themselves for this new year. Learn voiceover from the ground up or from wherever you are to where you want to be. VO2GoGo.com forward slash VOBS. Let's make 2018 your year. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Acoustics, extremely important in a home voiceover studio. Do we talk about it enough on this show? Uh, a, a few times. But we're joined here by Ron Knight. Ron, welcome to our show. Hey, thanks for uh, joining me here at NAMP. It's yeah. Good to see you guys. And you're with Jokavi Acoustics. Absolutely. I've known these guys for about four years now. I guess some of your people might remember me from voiceover over the decades. And I've started working with this organization because... When people were asking me on advice on what am I going to do about my home studio, uh, there's a lot more to it than just getting your favorite little USB microphone and patching it into your deck with Pro Tools, and then the next thing you know, you're still dealing with the sounds of your room. So this organization has got this company around the world for 21 years in about 47 countries, has been coming up with great sonic solutions, acoustic treatment solutions, and to boot, Needless to say, they look pretty doggone good. Yeah, aesthetics is always important to a lot of our clients, and uh, these are very different from you know, charcoal and purple and, and that sort of thing. Well, not to downplay, but a lot of the other off-the-shelf solutions might be available at your typical retail chain. Your general choice has been gray, camel, and maybe purple, and it's the same plan of five fingers with a little bit of an absorbent foam. That may do the trick in terms of just drying up a room and mopping it up, but it's not really solving a lot of the other acoustical solutions that you may need to have solved in your voiceover home. Yeah, booth. I'm looking over here. I mean, I'm, there's a combination of different stuff. We've got obviously diffusers at the bottom, yes, that's but right. then we have right. some things up top here <laughs> that are more of a combination of reflection and absorption, right? Yes, so that is correct. How would that be an advantage in a small booth? Well, I look at it this way. When you're getting your typical off-the-shelf stuff, whether it's Ultimate, Markertech, some of the other usual suspects that are out there, you're coming up with one solution and people are just patching it wherever it needs to sure. go. 
The thing about sound is while there's no such thing as sound proofing, we do have sound mop up, clean up, and sound confusion of sound waves. And really, the more you can confuse a sound wave and mop it up from all of its different respective problems, bass, low end frequencies, high end frequencies, mid ranges, something like this, Aside from being pretty doggone gorgeous to look at, I mean, can you imagine if you were recording in your den and you had a whole wall made of something like this? And we have a variety of options. This is actually doing three different things. It's got an inner core of sound absorption. Within every square on the inside, it's got a texture, which is also creating that uh, not a parallel wall or that typical thing where you're having a reflective surface, so sound is going to bounce off of that. Then what's happening is that by capturing the sound wave in the room, it's actually forcing it into a pattern, which is then forcing it to get absorbed into the outer shell, which is also yet another reflective or absorption type of material. Wow. So that's all going on within one panel. And a price point on something like this for the voiceover guy, gal, $46 for a two foot by two foot panel. So when you think about what? just getting something like that and saying, how am I going to treat my room? I think maybe all of us would agree that's probably a little that's bit more interesting than just good a little five fingers sticking out of the same gushy foamy stuff. Right. That's that's actually an excellent price point. You wouldn't Amazing. need a whole lot of I thought that was going to be $150, frankly. <laughs> yeah, we, have, we do have that as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, these we are, do, these this are much more complex. This firm does everything from concert halls, professional recording studios, pavilions, uh, theaters, the whole gamut, you know, yeah. even in terms of restaurants and every other typical isolated sound problem trap. But for the home studio person, this is probably, you know, another thing they have is what we call studio kit in a box. So somebody says, gee, my home studio is going to be in my closet. It's four foot by six. I actually am doing this in a den. Maybe that's 12 foot by 16. We have six templates ready to go by size, by color, and they can literally go say, I need ATP, uh, ATP kit number four, uh, version number B. That gets sent in a box. They can just throw it by template right up into their room. Mm, very nice. And that's... And that's a that's a really great thing for anybody who really doesn't exactly know what they want to do, that they can get a kit like that, and and you show them how to arrange it. And, uh, we can, you know, I mean, if they really are going to go open up a real pro grade studio, then we're really happy to come on out and show them how, oh, how, yeah. to, how to put that together. We do that, sure. don't we? Um, tell us about what's unique about that substrate, that that, that white foam. foam yeah, sure, is that uh, being used in some of these products? Yeah, this is. I mean, some vocal people or voiceover people might know what I'm talking about. We used to have a New York, New Jersey studio, which was really busy a lot. And we'd step into a little whisper room or something like that. And it, it had a really nice quality, more or less, to just dampen up the sound. But your voice talent would get in there after a while. They'd feel like, gee, I'm going hoarse. I, it feels like I'm getting a scratchiness in the throat. Literally, the joke I've told is we've had people go out, get those spray mister bottles, and bring them back into the vocal booth, trying to get some humidity in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things going on in your recording environment for your throat. This is actually used in hospitals. This particular foam is an antimicrobial. It's hypoallergenic. It is antiviral, antifungal, and this is something they use in a medical environment, but at the end of the day, you can see the fine cellular weave in that foam. Right. As a sound absorptive property, it's great, but for the vocal person, when using this, it's pretty doggone great, because if you're having issues with your throat, this can be a solution. Is this as effective, if not more so, than like a, fo a typical foam? Type material Again, it all depends on what's going on in the room. Yeah. When these guys came to my rescue, I had a recording studio that was built in the flight path of an airline airport, yeah. and uh, that had all kinds of issues going on. Sure. There's a different foam for a different solution Absolutely. It's based upon the environment that you're in. Nice. Where do, you, where do we get this stuff? Where would the typical voice actor go to pick out some of this product well, online? Well, funny that you mention that. <laughs> Let me tell you, George. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, George. I'm the North American rep for this company. I do have a site for what it's worth, kegtrader.com. They can come over there and take a look at the kits in the box. But they also have a brand new service, Tana, which is, again, mentioning that this company is out of Portugal, but now in North America, they have a little online website called Acoustic Shop. And we can give you a promo code. That is uh, the 10% discount going on with NAM. Those people who are in voiceover, reach out to me. I'll give you a code. You get the continued 10% discount for ordering anything online from out of the United States supply. Awesome. That's what I would do. That's, it sounds like a great deal. Well, Ron, pleasure to meet you finally. We certainly yeah. know your name from the voiceover uh, business. Been, I've seen your name too out there in the world, and I'm glad you guys are blogging and keeping nice it happening. Nice to meet you, George. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it. There we are.
boy, we still had such a great time at NAMM and uh, met some cool people like Ron Knight and, you know, acoustic panels like that, very, very important. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more acoustical panel vendors at NAMM, which means the more and more people are catching on how important acoustics are in their studios and more companies are making innovative products that are affordable. That's the big thing. That's exactly. that's what I think set those apart from what I've seen out there in terms of something that looks really different and customized and interesting, but is still affordable. Right. Because there's a lot of really cool panels out there that can get two, three, four hundred dollars per two by two for those diffusers and stuff. Right. So those those are much really, more cost effective. Yeah. Really reasonably priced and cool looking panels. Alrighty. Well, if you've just crawled out from under a rock, maybe you don't know that George and I are the top two guys when it comes to your home voiceover studio. And uh, we we build them, we design them. You actually use like CAD software and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, we know what it's supposed to sound like. And we want you to sound the way we want you to sound because we know what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've heard of we we've heard a thing or two, so we know a thing or two. A thing a coin, or a, a phrase. phrase. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, can we use that, or we get sued? Probably. Well, you you, you, you paraphrased it. That's okay. That, that's that's not a copyright issue. But um, the fact of the matter is, is we've heard literally thousands of different home voiceover studios yeah. and amazing what we hear usually it's like you don't have the right input or you've got the microphone backwards top <laughs> stuff two, like top that. two head slappers mic yeah. facing the wrong way wrong input in your recording software right. pretty, <laughs> the pretty simple stuff when you get down to it but if you would like to talk to george and uh, have some time with him and get your stuff fixed or totally designed how would they do that you can find me over at George the dot tech, or for those that find that confusing, you can go to George the tech dot com. And I've got all sorts of services starting as little as 25 bucks on up to pretty elaborate stuff, designing studios and everything in, in between. You can schedule online and find my calendar and get on my calendar right in all in one place. All right. And if you need to talk to me, yeah, keep trying. Uh, you go to Dan at Dan Leonard dot com or my my uh, homepage, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, and I've got my Specimen Collection Cup there. You click on that, it's a Dropbox. Give me your audio, and uh, I'll give it a review. They're starting to pile up in there a little bit because I was out of town for 48 hours in Florida, which is a whole other story. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll be getting to those this week, and I will analyze people's audio, and uh, we'll try and get you sounding good. Anyway, we have a listener question, a tech question. We really do. Which we have not read. So it's like we're going to be like right. using telepathy to figure this one real out. Time, real yes. time. Real time. Real uh, time. From Carly Rush. Hi, guys. My problem is driving me crazy. <laughs> I have a Centrance MicPort Pro that has been an inexpensive, adequate for the most part interface. However, I cannot get my mic audio high enough through the headphone jack. My computer audio output and my headphone volume on my MicPort Pro are at the max but I just barely get by with a pair of Walkman headphones. Hmm. Well, I can't get the audio output loud enough for regular studio headphones. The volume on anything I listen to on the internet, though, on the MicPort Pro is too loud at the same level, and I have to have the audio level at my mic output on the headphones. Do I need a new interface? If so, can you recommend a decent, inexpensive interface that will solve my problem? There's, you know, there, there you go, two juxtaposed opposed words inexpensive and solve problem no that's that's that's, that's, what I, that's what i look for yeah stuff that's inexpensive and solves problems that, right those are two of the top of the criteria when i'm selecting anything for voiceover studios your thoughts i have my ideas on what's going on here but well there are some magic words not in the question that's true mac or windows not in there um, I don't think it's either because the mic port, if you're talking about the monitoring circuit, the part that lets you hear yourself when you're on the mic, the zero latency monitoring part, that is hardwired inside the actual mic port pro. It's in the circuit, whether it's plugged into any computer, as long as it's getting power, you should be able to hear yourself, your own mic in your cans, nice and loud, good and hot. I've never had problems getting a good output. So if that's what you're talking about, then I think it might be hardware. I mm -hmm. think the MicPort Pro itself might be uh, dying a slow and painful death. Yeah. 
Did, well, what do you think? Uh, well, it's missing something else, yeah. and that is a picture of her waveform. True. She may be recording way too low. She may have what she doesn't tell us what mic she's using. She may have the 10 dB pad on there or a 20 dB pad or something like right, that. Right. And she, it may not be loud enough in the recording, in which case you really got to drive the gain to bring it up. Right. The, the audio and anything I listen to on the internet through my mic port is too loud at the same level. Okay. Yeah. So we don't know what microphone she's using. Does the mic have a pad? Exactly. If the mic's pad is on, you can crank the gain wide open and still get a kind of a weak signal. Right. Or, or she's talking through her laptop's mic. That's another possibility. I mean, if you're, if you're recording yourself through the mic port pro and monitoring yourself through the mic port pro, you should get a good monitor of yourself in your headphones through the mic port pro. Right. You should get a nice hot level. You could try a little experiment. We don't know what recording software you're using. Another little detail that would have been helpful. But um, if you're on something like Twisted Wave, for example, you could turn on the um, monitoring system in Twisted Wave. And see where it will actually are. let you hear what comes through. Plug your headphones into the Mac or piece. If it's Twisted Wave, it would be a Mac. Plug your headphones in the Mac and you would hear the audio that's it's going through Twisted Wave and back into the MicPort Pro. So you'd hear the sort of the whole the whole journey as it comes back around. If that's too low and the levels in Twisted Wave are healthy, then it's definitely something with the MicPort Pro that's probably needs to be checked out. Yeah. All righty. You know, well, but she said the recording levels. She didn't say anything about the recording level. That's what's missing here, right? Right. Yeah. So I'm thinking she's just recording too low, which could be due to a number of factors, yeah. which is why when you talk to us, we ask you lots of questions. We do. We do. And just, if you're in the chat room right now, Carly, if you're watching the show live, uh, you know, give us some more detail. We'll, 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 we'll tell you what, give us more detail. We'll follow it up after Tim or maybe Tim might have some. I'll bet you Tim Hill had his own ideas. He might have his own ideas. This is a special night where we've got another Studio Tech Pro on the show with us, so he might be able to fill in some blanks as well. But give us a few more details. Macro windows, what are the recording levels look like in your DAW? Mic. What mic are you using and what DAW are you using? All four things that we'd love to know to help better answer uh, your question. So... All right. By the way, ado. we're in Chris Tom's studio tonight. Oh, yeah. You know, our, our producer thought this was his bathroom. But <laughs> yeah. actually, no, this, is, this is his closet booth, and it's really pretty the way he did that. Yeah, I love it. I love the studio. It feels very comfy and spacious. It feels like we're, we belong in here. It looks like we're actually in it, too, which is even better. <laughs> so if you'd like to get your picture of your home studio from this perspective on VoiceOver Body Shop, send it in to us at the guys at vobs.tv. Yeah, and uh, we'll get your picture. Notice how well T Tim's shot is formatted for the show. Yes, you know it looks. It really looks like we're sitting in this room, which I think uh, is really fun. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, Tim Tippett is coming up. Lots of interesting stuff to talk to him about. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder the information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Now's my chance to tell you about our sponsor, Source Elements, who's been with us for quite a while now. Purveyors of fine recording equipment, software, really much less equipment, more on the software side. They make the best tools for connecting your studio to any other studio in the voiceover world. Chances are, whatever studio you're recording with, it's probably going to be using this software. It's been around almost, actually, over 10 years, and it's established itself in this business quite heavily. They have a special feature that's been developed in the last few months called SourceNet. 
what does it do? If you're traveling and you're having trouble getting a reliable connection through the firewall at the hotel or your aunt's house, whatever the issue that's blocking the signal coming back to your to yourself from the other studio, Don't you might want to try something called SourceNet. It's built in to Source Connect 3.9 and newer. Both ends have to be on it, but if you're both on 3.9 Pro or standard, uh, you can use this software, this system called SourceNet. It just provides sort of like a magic patch cable over the internet to get you through those tough network issues. And it can be a real lifesaver where network problems get in the way of allowing a round trip uh, connection with the far end studio. So something you can try out again, it's in built into source connect 3.9. You just have to have source connect 3.9 and a current support contract to make use of source net. If you want to get using source connect right away, Give it a try. Go over to source-elements.com and you can get a 15-day free trial and give it a shot. You don't have to have a little iLock thing. Just have an iLock account, which is totally free. You can start trying it right away. Tell them we sent you. We'd appreciate it. And we'll be right back with Tim Tippett's Stand By. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. That good old-fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. All right, we're back. Time to introduce our guest. Tim Tippett is an independent full-time voice talent composer and media producer, providing services to a variety of clients at all levels. Major brands include New Balance, Lexus, Nissan, Sears, Saskatel. I wonder if that's like in Canada. Uh, Craftsman, Mar Vista Entertainment, Amway, and many more. He also advises fellow voice talents on the finer points of voiceover recording technology. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Tim Tippett. Hey, Tim. Hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, pretty good. Great to, great to see you here uh, today. Um, you've got quite a strong resume here. Um, uh, and, uh, well, I know. Uh, but tell us a little bit about Tim Tippett's. So I was born in LA, raised in Hollywood, and I was really fortunate to, uh, as a, as a young musician around 13 or 14 years old to get some really great mentors in my life. And at that time I started playing live, uh, any venue I could find, you know, coffee shops and, and poetry type of things. And from there, uh, as I started to develop more as a rock guitarist, I, I gained even more mentors and these people brought me into a world that i just couldn't even possibly imagine existed uh, at the pro level we're really fortunate to have been in a lot of really high level studios around a lot of high level musicians and of course being a very curious kid i would ask a lot of questions and apparently i wasn't annoying people too much because they were willing to share their information and through that i learned quite a bit at a very young age and so as i continued to develop um, you know, continuing to develop these relationships, continuing to develop time in studios, uh, uh, live bands, various iterations throughout my teens and, and adult life, that eventually uh, kind of turned into an interest into electronics and audio. And I started getting more involved in that, started actually etching out and acid washing my own PCB boards to make my own effects for guitar. Wow. And so forth. Yeah. I, got into it big time nice and started frankensteining a lot of stuff right like yeah. I would take tape players and my mom would bring home uh from any garage sale she'd bring home like a uh you know like a, a record player or something like that and i would just you know i learned to solder i learned what capacitors were i learned what resistors were and i brought all this stuff together and i would i would even take motors and parts from these things and start making little boats out of some wood <laughs> stuff like that. nuts right <laughs> So anyway, that, that kind of went on and on and on. And eventually I just kind of became the, the go-to guy for, uh, you know, my keyboard's not working. Can you figure out what's wrong with the thing? And so I roadied for a while, of course. And as I was going through these various iterations of bands playing and them also being a studio musician, I began to pick up more and more information. Fill in the uh, blanks with all the sordid tales of being a roadie. Oh, geez. Let's no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> It was the 80s, and nobody, every everyone wants to know, but you don't want to know. What it's happens the, on the road stays on the road. And what happens yeah. in the 80s stays, stays in the, in the 80s. 80s. Yeah. 
some shades of gray. Um, so anyway, so, uh, through that experience, I, you know, eventually kind of grew up and, uh, decided to get serious about music and, you know, started doing more session work and got more serious about my career as a musician. And eventually I landed, uh, this gig for Herbie Hancock, uh, as a producer where I would mix, uh, perform, record, hit songs to teach people how to sing. It was this big project that he had created and that was done with four tracks and samplers and so on and so forth. And so at that time I was pretty much forced to learn as much as I possibly could because, you know, Herbie's a pretty big deal and I'm, I got to step up and I need to sound really, really good. And so I was able to accomplish that. And that led into being signed by all nations music and, that kind of spun off into being released on internationally on this uh, maxi disc for a, for a band that you've all heard of. I won't go into all that, but it was basically covering their song in a different style. And so through all of that, I started a family and then, you know, stuff got real. Yeah. Of course. That's what usually cuts into all the other stuff. Yeah, you know, exactly. When you, when you do so, that. You, you have your relative importance and, and nothing's more important to me than family. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, being a tradesman, if you're in LA and you're a musician, you're a painter more than likely. And I was, but, uh, I expanded on that and learned as much as I could about the trades. And eventually that led me to becoming a corporate guy. And so I was with Chipotle Mexican girl for seven years as the central head of construction and a lot of R and D, a lot of uh, programming, a lot of, I was on their Darwin committee for the evolution of the brand. And I think oh. I joined around 34 stores and I got out of there around 800 and something stores. <laughs> uh, obviously they were hugely successful. Uh, but after that, I went on to this company, uh, Potbelly as an executive there. Uh, again, same role, building systems and leading teams uh, to execute. And, all the time picking up a lot of information, believe it or not, at Chipotle especially, sound was something that was really, really important to them. I got to um, ask you, sidebar, did yeah. you have anything to do whatsoever if the diffusion panels that are on the wall in Chipotle's when you walk in that are on the left side as you're waiting in line, did you have anything yeah. to do with that? You can't miss them. Yeah, I, was, I was actually going to, that's exactly where I was going with that. Um, the architects over there, um, just amazing. I mean, these guys are brilliant, all of the in-house designers, and they really, uh, really understood what it was that was going on in the stores acoustically. So you may see them on the sides, you may see them on the corrugated lid, you may see them in any, you know, particular part of the store, but the before and after of those treatments, um, and I can't recall the, the name of them, but they kind of look like, uh, they kind of look like ramen noodles before you cook them, right? Uh, usually oh, those are yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Look, actually, I think of it as more like a shredded wheat. A shredded wheat, yeah. Okay, that would be a, a, a kind of like that. Same idea. Yeah. Shredded wheat would actually probably work, which is <laughs> yeah, well, <sure. laughs> it's biodegradable, but yeah, yeah, yeah. probably yeah. would. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, the stuff was not cheap. Uh, that's for sure, because I had to fit that stuff in my budget. But talk about effective. I mean, really, really effective. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. While I was there with Chipotle, uh, you know, get deep diving into that kind of stuff and just a lot of uh, MEP, mechanical, uh, electrical, plumbing, stuff like that, you learn an awful lot uh, when you're leading teams and you, and you really need to know every single detail about what it is that's going on. And the sound uh, attenuation was a big part of that. And so... Since I already had a, a huge interest in that, that just carried over into everything that I was doing uh, moving forward. Now, speaking of that, fast forward through my tenure with Potbelly, uh, I decided uh, that I needed a, a change of course in my life. And so I went independent and uh, went out to Bel Air and built a big $20 million mansion as an owner's rep and then decided, you know what, I really need to get back to my roots. And so I did. And so what I did is I'm, I'm very much a believer in taking everything, uh, kind of like little, uh, you know, points, laser points and, and putting them on one thing and focusing them there and then giving it a name. And it turned out that that thing was what I was in already, which was, you know, composing music, which is something that I do, 
but also voiceover. Oh, by the way, Richard Harris said those panels we're describing are, I believe you said, tectum panels. Tectum, perfect. Thank T-E-C-T-U-M. you, T-E-C-T-U-M. He's spot on. Tectum is exactly what they're called. Uh, so uh, anyway, it turns out that when I pinpointed all of these uh, attributes that I have, uh, that thing was called voiceover. And so I got into voiceover. And I was lucky enough to succeed early on. But uh, one thing that I would like to, to let everyone know out there, um, especially musicians, um, when you're a musician and an engineer and you're used to working in environments where you can throw a gate on a, on a, on a strat that's losing its mind, you know, when you're not playing and it's just buzzing all over the place or a vocalist on a SM58 that might have a ground loop or whatever and you just gate the thing. You go into voiceover thinking to yourself, yeah, this isn't going to be a problem. Uh, yeah, it is. And it's going to be a big problem because they are not the same thing at all. And we see this all the time. You know, George, Dan, I know that you understand this. When people are online and they're looking for help and they're asking very simple questions, uh, suddenly everyone in that forum wants to sound like the smartest guy in the room. You know, yeah, yeah we call it we, support by committee, tech yeah. support by committee. Don't crowdsource your homes. Doesn't yet. always work out too well for you. Right. Exactly. So there's a lot of, you know, responses like, well, it depends or, uh, you know, big flowery words, $5 words where, you know, a quarter word will suffice that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, compression, for instance, and someone's trying to understand what it is the compression does. And it just, it just really gets to me when someone doesn't just break it down for them simply and at least give them some idea by saying, look, it's an, it's an automatic volume leveler to some degree, like say something, right? You know, you're controlling the, the, the peaks of the amplitude to, to whatever degree. Uh, but again, uh, the world of music is an area, while I have a great deal of respect for engineers in, in the music industry, they don't, you know, there are plenty of them who, who absolutely know what it is that they're doing. The voiceover thing is com- a completely different animal. Yeah, a yeah. good example of that. Yeah, would, we, we learned that along the way too. Yeah, that's, big, that's kind of how I came into it. Just seeing how many people didn't get voiceover studios. Right, and 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 the thing is, is as as we're saying, always saying, this stuff was designed. All the equipment we have was designed for recording music. And the rooms just you're a, in, the right. studios, just, the spaces. Just, for, right. For so music. we're just adapting all of this equipment for our use. So what's your philosophy on what a home studio should be then? Well, let me tell you, my philosophy uh, came in a very organic way because what I did being a uh, construction specialist and um, what I mean by that is I can, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where I'm at with, with what it is I know how to do is I can build a, a home from the ground up every bolt, every, you know, every piece of wood, the whole nine yards. So I, I truly get it. And so when I entered the fray here, I <laughs> said, well, I'm going to build a booth and it's not going to be a problem. And, uh, you know, I'm going to build a control room just like everybody else. And I did that. And then I stepped into my booth and I live about, I don't know, maybe 50 yards from a fairly major intersection. And I got in there with a TLM 103, which, you know, if you haven't eaten or you just ate, bad idea. To voice it's also like idea. a seismograph. Yeah, really. <laughs> So I'm sitting here or standing there and I'm voicing and I'm starting to hear earth noise and it's, you know, 18 wheelers are going by and I'm hearing the cocoon, cocoon, you know, across my intersection. And I just said, wow, I really missed the mark. So being an R&D guy, I dug deep and I really uh, was earnest about understanding what was happening at a physical level. Uh, and how it is that I could uh, get rid of everything, mitigate everything that could possibly come into my into my booth. Now, me, I have been accused several times of being the type of person who uh, gets assigned something, and then I go into a cave for a while, and then I come out with the answer, and ta-da! Uh, but I'm very thorough. I, be- I become obsessed with the answer, and I've since <laughs> calmed down with that, but... <laughs> Um, really when I took my approach, uh, uh, toward, you know, making sure that my booth was absolutely 100% soundproof, uh, which there's no such thing, but that's what I was shooting for. Um, I really, really took a deep dive on it. And so 
I, you know, all the usual suspects. I was, I was decoupling. I was using green glue. I was taking everything that I had learned from my past experience about, uh, about sound and applying it to the booth. And so when I finally finished, um, the city had shown up to cut a tree down that they had been promising to cut for about three years. The thing was just tangling up our power lines. And uh, they showed up and I said, well, what a great opportunity to test just how good my booth is. And so I went down there and I uh, started up audition and I started voicing. And about 20 minutes went by and I, you know, frankly, I got a little PO'd and because uh, I, you know, they hadn't started yet. So I went upstairs and I said to my wife, uh, what is the problem? Uh, she said, what do you mean? I the said, he's gone. <laughs> yeah. Not only were they gone, but uh, she told me the story of how they had thrown everything into a chipper and there's nothing louder than a chipper. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And this thing, this thing's 35 feet from my booth. Wow. Yeah. So at that point I said, okay, I've got something here. And, uh, you know, I, I continued to, to research and research and research, uh, to, to dig even, even deeper, which is typical of me, but I had finally come to the conclusion that, okay, I got, you know, I got the judge. <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah. And in yeah. that story, uh, Tim yeah. is the experience you had why should someone have to go through that themselves and do all the research and take all the time and make mistakes when you or George or I or other people who know how to do this know how to do this and have done it more than once? They shouldn't have to. And that's why I do this. So I got called the VO tech guru, uh, which, you know, to me, I, I don't particularly like the name because it sounds like I'm coming off the mountain with tablets in my hands. Um, but you know, look, it stuck, it became a brand, whatever. And, and people come to me all the time as they do you and, and George. And you guys don't need to go through that. The, the, all of the heavy lifting has been done already. Uh, there is a lot to know about this kind of stuff. And you don't need to drive yourself nuts going to this YouTube video or that YouTube video. Because honestly, at least 90% of the guys on there really just, they're kind of leveling out at just okay. Right. And when, they're, they're experts in one studio. They're right. Exactly. They're, they're, exactly. That's a, that's a really, really good way to put it. A, a good example of that would be an Australian client that I had where, and I'm sure you guys have dealt with this before because they are quite a bit ahead of us in time and you're up, you know, very late helping them. Uh, I had a person who had a roof that was uh, corrugated. So when it rained, there's no VO, period, right? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't really matter what kind of booth you have at that point. Um, but to your point, uh, Dan, uh, the thing is, is that, you know, we do this stuff because we care about this. We don't do it uh, because, you know, we, I, at least I can speak for me. I, as I said earlier, you know, I, I don't really like the, the, the name VO Tech Guru very much, but I am very passionate about helping people who are searching for answers, who are feeling lost in the sea of information, because there is so much information out there. And some of it's correct, uh, a lot of it's not. But as, as a talent who is looking to get into the business, it's already scary. A lot of these people are taking a leap of faith based on a calculation, right? And who knows what that calculation might be. It might be something that weighs very heavily against their favor if they don't succeed. Uh, they may be in a situation where they're retired and they're just, you know, just kind of having some fun. Who knows? That's right. But the well, reality is... Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up your thought there. Yeah. The reality is these people take this stuff seriously and they want to, they want to succeed when they succeed and I'm helping them to succeed. I succeed. Right. It's a huge payoff for me. I got a lot of karma bucks in the bank. You know, I can make more money uh, with compositions, more money voicing uh, than I do with helping people. But the reality is guys, you know, this, the home studio is the expectation at this point. Yep. And that's right. You can't just have someone come to you uh, you know, being an expert and ask for your help and just kind of say, well, you know, go ahead and it, it's on the web somewhere. Yeah. 
Our guest tonight here on VoiceOver Body Shop is Tim Tippetts, the VO Tech guru. So he says, or so somebody said. So he was dubbed. Told, so he was and dubbed. It stuck. And it's stuck. Um, you know, we won't, both you and I get called gurus all the time, but we are not. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you've got a question for Tim, throw it in our chat room and Paul Stefano, who is monitoring the chat room tonight, will relay that question to us and we'll ask it of Tim when we return. Cause we're going to take a quick break here and we'll be right back with more from Tim Tippett's in just a couple minutes. Skittles taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The national zoo, <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All righty. Our good friend Harlan Hogan has his new... LED 20 color voice over recording sign with the remote. It's a home run. The best selling new item on voice over essentials since Porta Booths and the VO1A microphone. In fact, they totally sold out the first shipment, but they doubled their original order and they have arrived. And Harlan has knocked $10 off the price, but that's only until midnight tonight, Pacific time. The one and only VO recording sign now with 20 color LED illumination and a credit card sized remote. Here it is. It's an actual credit card sized remote and it can do all sorts of cool things because you know you can change the mode and get it to uh, change colors and flash. Boy, if someone doesn't notice that that's going on, that you're recording, then you've really got a problem. So if you want one of these things, the official voiceover essentials voiceover recording sign that will look so elegant outside of your home studio. Go to voiceoveressentials.com right now. You have till midnight Pacific time. So if you're up at 3 a.m. and you're on the East Coast, you can still get one for $10 off. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com and order yours now along with all the other great stuff that Harlan has over at his website. Thanks, Harlan, for being a great sponsor here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Go buy this sign. It's great. I've got at least two of them. In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS and VOBS.TV. Having dinner tonight? How about having some VO, too? VoiceOver Body Shop. Have some VoiceOver with your dinner tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. <laughs> and we're back with Tim Tippett's here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and we've got lots of questions from our voluminous audience all across the Fruited Plain and across the, the globe. We know there's people watching in Australia, in Japan, and in Nairobi. Maybe <laughs> we hope. Well, we no. can we can kind of dovetail off that question from earlier because we got some more um, details from Carly oh. Rush about her Micport Pro. So you can you can uh, chime in on this one, Tim. Yeah, Tim. I don't know if you heard it from earlier, but basically, in a nutshell, she's getting very low levels off her Micport Pro, and she doesn't know why. But now we know more about her setup because she has an MXL two thousand one microphone. Mm -hmm. She's on a, a PC. Well, there's your problem. It's not a, it's not a <laughs> desktop. I mean, it's not a laptop. It's a PC <laughs> uh, desktop. Um, she doesn't know what a pad is. We were talking about a switch on the mic that turns on a pad. So we'll talk about that. Um, and she's recording an Adobe Audition. It's the mic only. She says that's the problem. Her output into Adobe is great. So apparently she's getting great recording levels and very low monitoring levels. What's been your experience, Tim, with the MicPort Pro? So her playback is low. Yeah, she's saying her her level off her own off of her own mic in her headphones is really low with everything cranked wide open. 
There's a lot of okay. you can get. So there are the obvious questions, which is, do you have the headphone volume turned up? Which, you know, we always start with, is the thing plugged in? She says she has her, um, my computer audio output and my headphone volume on my Micboard Pro are at the max. That's what she said. Hmm. Well, now that she's provided all of this additional information, because I was listening in to the original question, um, you know, it, it sounds like you've got a bad unit. Yeah, it does. Could be. Yeah, it might be time for a new interface. Yeah. Would you have many uh, choices? She has an MXL 2001. So unless, if she says she's getting good recording levels in Audition. Yeah, so the pad's not going to make a difference. So right, she's getting right. good levels. Is she, is she uh, I don't know if she can answer, but if she is she maintaining somewhere between minus 6 and minus 12 on her peaks? You know, what kind of levels are we talking about here? Yeah. Right. I, I know from experience, if you turn up the headphone volume on the mic port pro with your cans plugged into the little jack, yep. wide open, you, unless you've got some esoteric studio headphones, 600 ohm headphones, you should get good volume. You should yeah, hear you know yourself. What, George, very well. George, um, do me a favor, touch on this because we have, we have the uh, Bayer Dynamics, uh, the 80 ohm, and then we have the 250s. And okay. the 600. They have a yeah, 600. 600. Okay. So if you could say a little something right here, because this is something that I tell people all the time about the 80s. You're a big fan of the 80s. I'm a big fan of the 80s. One of the reasons that I'm a huge fan is because I can plug them into my iPhone or any other device and I have very little resistance. Yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, when you're looking at headphones and there's more than one model on, under the same model number, it can be confusing. If you have DT770 Pro, but they have an 80, a 250, I think they may still make a 600. Go with the ones with the lower ohm rating. Basically, the lower the ohm rating or the impedance rating, generally the easier they are to drive. What that means is they can get louder plugged into an iPhone or a right. Mic Pro. They have less resistance. Yeah, they're exactly. easier to drive. And that's yeah. what impedance is uh, yeah. for anyone who's listening is it's basically how much resistance you're giving to that flow that's coming in. So if you have 250s, you're going to need a lot more power to drive those. Right. And so I saw a recent post about what sort of preamp should I get to drive these 250s. As a voiceover artist, I just thought, nah, I should have got the 80s. Yeah, I have to agree with that. If, otherwise, that's there's no audible difference between them I, that I'm aware of, you know? Yeah. Um, we were talking earlier about building studios. Um, at what point, I want to ask you this, at what point is it appropriate to go to the extent that you did to build your studio, say hiring somebody like yourself to design it and having a contractor build it, at what point is it appropriate to do that? Do you do that so, within five years, 10 years? Is it once you land a big promo client? When is it? When do you spend that kind of money? Or when you think it's going to get you work immediately, <laughs> yeah. which right. it won't do. Oh, that's, I think that that is something that we should probably, what Dan just said, is address that first. Uh, so where I'm at on this is people will enter the fray buying the best equipment, the best booth, the most expensive interface, and they haven't even gotten any coaching yet. Okay? It does happen. I've had, yeah. I've had one have, or two of those. Yeah. When I have people come to me and I say, Hey, send me a sample. Uh, when they send me a sample, the very first thing that I'll do is I'll meet with them and I'll say, you know, in a very, the, the kindest manner that I possibly can, as I say, Hey, you've got a little bit of work to do before you try to go down this runway. All right. And that is it, you know, in the form of getting coached because it doesn't really matter how good you sound uh, if the read isn't there right at the end of the day. So uh, I'm very honest and upfront about that, but to answer your question um, about at what point should you take that approach? It, for me, it's not a matter of time. It's a matter of attitude. It's a matter of your goal. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? If the answer is, I want to kill it in voiceover, okay? And you know that you've got the chops. You know that this thing is going to happen. You've done your homework. It's in your bones. It's in your bones. You have <laughs> talked you have talked and worked with with a Dan Leonard or a George Whittem or a Tim Tippetts, and you know these people have verified, yes, you're good to go. Then the answer is now, in my opinion. Take it seriously and go for it. Now, if you're on a budget, it becomes a different discussion because as we've seen with the studio suit, for instance, 
that that Dan and his wife so generously put together for many many VO out there. And there are other ways to 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 skin that cat as well with moving blankets and so on and so forth. There are many ways that you can get yourself at a pro level sound. George, you've talked about this ad nauseum. A closet, I've talked about it ad nauseum. It could be a closet. We've seen Cipriano do his what I call the sip tent in the hotel with the right. ironing <laughs> over the top, right? I mean, there's a lot there are a lot of ways to get it done. Yeah. That guy even voices in a car. Yeah. You know? because, because nobody really needs to see how the sausage is made. I like that. <laughs> Been using it for years. It just comes up. <laughs> really cool. I like that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's actually really good. Um, it, it's it's really a matter of where you're at, monetarily speaking, relative to what it is that you're attempting to accomplish. Don't go out and buy a twenty five hundred dollar microphone and use a sixty dollar interface. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't have a $50 per job voice and use a $1,500 microphone, right? You've got to start somewhere. And if you're just getting into the business, then start simple. Some you know? of us are lucky enough to have a long runway. As I said, yes. in the tech sector, uh, how much runway you got, which is basically <laughs> how much money do you have to start your business? You know, if you're coming uh, in it with a $20,000 budget, you know what? Good for you. You're yeah. blessed. And yeah. But if you've, right, got, well, if, if you've got great equipment, it doesn't matter if you don't know how to use it, which is pretty important as well. Yeah. It and doesn't matter if you don't know how to use it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. early indications can also, because the market dictates what it is that it wants from you, right? At the end of the day. It's true. Right? Right. Tim, so, we got so much stuff we got to cover because we're getting a lot of questions and we're not going to get to everything we, we put on our list tonight, but that's good because that means we need to have you back right. another time. But before we oh. go to the questions, got to touch on our favorite gear that we oh. that we like to gush about the apollo we'll, twin we'll, we'll put a few minutes into this <laughs> okay let's give it a i'm going to set a five minute timer okay uh, legitimately oh. because yeah, everybody's we, asking about this because we even i go, want one we could go on for a long time <laughs> i'm setting a five minute timer to talk about this thing and, and go what is the <laughs> what is the apollo stuff why are you so into it i'll put in my two cents Okay, the Apollo stuff. Wow. Okay, so whether you're running a rack, you're running a quad, you're running a twin, you're running a duo, whatever it may be, the great thing about the Apollo, which you're hearing me on right now, uh, through the through the Manly Vox Box plugin, is that you get to have real time uh, effects running and printing to tape. Uh, for those of you who don't understand what tape is, it's what we used to record to. <laughs> on these reel to reel, but digitally speaking, it allows you to go in sounding your best. Um, and of course we always kiss the audio with these effects. We don't try to mash it or anything like that. It's just, most of it is about removing what it is that we don't want to improve the signal. Okay. And then printing to tape to give our clients the best possible signal that we can. Now that's true for both uh, recording at home on your own and also true for recording in a live session. I've had live sessions where I've had several people ask me, what are you running over there? Right. And when you have that going on live and you're making it that much easier on the engineer, because you're just kissing the, the, the peaks, your, your, uh, you know, your EQ is removing the boxiness from the booth. You're rolling off the low end. So you don't have a bunch of this stuff migrating into your signal, a bunch of these low frequency, uh, things. Rumble, that are, yeah. Yeah. It really makes a huge difference, guys, a huge difference. And so when you're able to take that and emulate a studio sound while you're traveling and you can take that gear with you, especially with something like the 416 that rejects a lot of, a lot of sound. Uh, by the way, I get asked this a lot. So I'm going <laughs> to touch on this real quick. You guys can see the, uh, okay. looks like a 416 to me. <laughs> Okay. What those are all about, those uh, little holes there, let me put them back on. For the line gradient. Yeah. Those uh, basically cancel each other out as sound comes in through the side of the capsule. Okay. And that is a huge benefit because when I'm this close to this microphone and I'm getting that kind of gain, I can lower the actual gain on my input, which makes my noise floor go down, which only helps me. So when I'm in a live session, you know, I'm 
I'm the bee's knees, for lack of a better way to put it. And when you're going through the Apollo doing that, and you're able to save that session and then recall it later so that you can have more of a promo sound or you can have a more of a youthful sound. I, I mean, I've, I've got so many settings in this, in, in this thing at this point, it's ridiculous. I even have a Darth Vader setting that I set up for this thing. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that you can do. I, I, you know, with this, this talk, this get into, gets, gets into pr- advanced level stuff. Right. And the reason I say that is because we're talking about front end processing. You, yes. you are recording through a signal chain and Dan and I have preached pretty heavily against doing this for most voice actors, because if it's not set up right, yeah, yes. it's not going to help you. You're printing yeah. the effects. So like, if it's not right, if the gates losing bits of syllables or whatever is going on, it can, it can be a really bad scene. So, but if you know what you're doing, yeah. like Tim Tippett's does, yeah. it's a great tool to have. Yeah. And if you can get someone like Tim and I dealt with the Apollos a lot too, Chances are Dan's going to be at one of these days because he's going to have learning. to. Yeah. Uh, the Apollo stuff is can be fantastic. It's it's a it's a digital emulation of real physical gear that you would not normally dream about taking on the road with you. You would not take a rack of gear this thick in a yeah. suitcase and take it. But with this thing, you can get that sound that you had at home and take it on the road. You can replicate it. You can have a lot of settings and do it relatively affordably. I mean, it it comes oh, yeah. out of the box for what four ninety nine for the new uh, Apollo oh, Arrow. Arrow. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm supposed to be sent one here in the near future to give it a review and yeah, you know, follow up with that. But you know, that's why I teach that stuff is, is to get people to understand. And I'm doing the same thing at Vo Atlanta this round. Um, I'm having a big session on uh, the fundamentals of sound. We're also going to hold two X sessions where we're building these panels that you see behind me here. Cool. Uh, 10 people each and that's that's filling up we only have a few spots left so anyone who's interested who's going check that out please but um that is exactly why i teach that stuff is because when you understand what's happening with sound at a molecular level oh there's the alarm i guess we're done talking about apollo yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> finish your thought and then we'll go to the questions when you do truly understand that stuff, uh, what you do is what I call the tech gremlin. You kick them out of your booth forever. And when you do that, stress goes down, which results, believe it or not, in less mouth noise and the obvious things, better performance, confidence, and so on and so forth. So anyway, I guess that's all we have to say about Apollos today. Oh, it's today. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be plenty more. We could more. go on. We could. Uh, we have a question here from Devox for renters, for renters, because we deal with this all the time. What's the best way to treat a ceiling? Depends on the room, I suppose. I guess he's talking about how to keep noise from coming into a ceiling. Yeah. I'm going to fill in the blanks on that. Through a ceiling? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you don't, you're not attaching stuff to the ceiling, I think is what he's probably saying. Okay. So yeah, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll just cut to the chase here. So sound is vibration. Uh, energy in the form of vibration. All right. So if you have vibration coming through that lid and you don't have something that is going to stop it, such as, uh, you know, layering up drywall with green glue in between it or anything like that, there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. Uh, That's really bad news. I get that. But uh, there are a lot of things that you can do to help mitigate that. Uh, Moving blankets are a great example of that. Um, George, you guys still with me? Here. So we had our mic quiet yeah. because we were co- commiserating oh. about our questions. So <laughs> yeah. <go on. laughs> okay. So, so moving blankets. Um, there are. There's a company, VocalBoothToGo.com, uh, that sells some really super thick blankets. Um, they've sent me some. I love them. Uh, I think they work really, really well. You can set up a PVC structure and throw those over. Uh, Dan, if I'm not mistaken, you used the studio suit to do that over a PVC structure at one point. Yeah, yeah. We don't have studio suit anymore. We're thinking about reproducing it because it was a limited okay. supply of stuff. But okay, well, it worked the great me- though. Yeah. In the meantime, these moving blankets. I know that uh, Adil, the owner of VocalBoothToGo.com, traveled to China to make sure that these things were exactly what they should be. They're thicker than any other moving blanket I've ever seen. Um, and apparently there were some issues with the smell. So he flew out there and he straightened all that stuff out. And I've Dude, got the blank. That now. is, that is huge. The fact that he dealt with and made sure that the product has a minimal 
off gas of odor. That's a big deal. Yeah. These things are going to be used yeah. in small spaces. They can't yeah, stink. That, that dude is something else, man. He actually <laughs> went on the road with his van and he's got four cameras uh, on his van and he broke a world record, a world uh, Guinness uh, book of world records. Uh, the longest trip inside the United States without following another highway. I guess you can't take the same highway, uh, really? but it was 30 something thousand miles. We'll have to ask a deal about that. We need we to have in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, and totally. We did it here in Chicago and we did this thing with his, with his booth and his new thing, the Vomo, which is amazing. I did a test on that, which I'll be releasing some results on, but you know, that, that kind of stuff, guys, if you put together a simple PVC, um, structure, uh, Dominic King is a, is a recent student of mine who, man, did he ever improve his signal? He had the uh, 2i2 kit. George, I think you actually have that on one of your pages where it has the headphone and the 2i2, if I'm not mistaken, and the microphone. Do you have that one? I don't think I do now, but at one time I probably did. Yeah. Okay, we both have kit.coms. I have I have that one. Oh, you have the Steinberg setup. I have the, That's two, I have the yeah, the, the, the 12. Okay, so I tried out this 2i2 package, which I yeah. really liked, and yeah. I have it on my dot com you have your your stuff over there he had the kit doc or he had that that two i two uh package and he uh built this pvc structure used the moving blankets that i talked about he's probably 10 feet away from the refrigerator uh we set him up with eq uh with proper downward expansion uh with a little bit of compression we used rx elements uh for voice denoise and declick and man it sounds as good as any booth i've ever heard and he yeah. got away with that build for let's see, a hundred bucks on PVC and one seventy, so under three hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, if you have a quiet enough environment where you're not getting huge amounts of low frequency garbage from the outside, you don't need a heck of a lot to treat your ceiling. You don't have to go crazy, it's and you that, don't need to know a heck of a lot either. If you yeah. have someone on, if you have someone in your camp who knows what they're doing, that you can truly trust, and who cares about the result. Okay. They're not just in it for the money. They want to see you succeed. You can get to that answer and not spend a whole lot of money and greatly improve uh, your signal. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. I've yeah. done it many times, George, sure. Dan, on the same thing. There's two more questions. Um, they, at the end of the day, they're both talking about low frequency noise. Mm -hmm. Fred's is, Fred North's is about, I have slight vibration from the furnace, furnace, which is below my boot. I think he means booth, booth. <laughs> to other pe place to put my booth in. No other place to put my booth. I've got eight small vibration pads that the booth sits on, but I still get some noise. And Devox says, I was told they were planning to realign the flight path to the city airport to fly near my neighborhood, a thousand feet overhead, estimated at 66 dB at ground level. What can one do besides move? <laughs> okay. Well, you, can, you can decouple. That's yeah. one thing you can do because what's going on here is that lower frequencies have longer waveforms. And not only are they able to penetrate better than higher frequencies, so we see this in two inch foam versus a four inch foam. Uh, the two inch will take care of the high frequencies, uh, but not so much the low frequencies because they just have a lot more power without going into the details. Uh, low frequencies will also flank. So if you have an opening somewhere, uh, they will go up and over. And this has to do with this longer waveform thing. All right. So what happens in a structure uh, like a house, for instance, is if you think about a speaker cabinet and you put a speaker inside of it, what is the intent of that speaker cabinet? Okay. It, it's intended to amplify and to bring out a lot of the character of what it is that's going on with the music. Now think about your house. And those vibrations, which I talked about earlier, traveling up through the structure of your home, through the two by fours, through the, through the uh, drywall and so on and so forth. If that's happening, like you have a mechanical unit that's attached to the house or you have a plane that's flying overhead, they're sending down these vibrations. These vibrations are hitting your structure. And then this room is basically becoming a giant speaker cabinet at the end of the day. So these low frequencies that are migrating into your space is no surprise at all. But decoupling, using a lot of, uh, of modern materials such as green glue with a proper application. People talk about mass. I get it. Mass is very helpful when it comes to, to mitigation. But the reality is at the end of the day, if you're smart about it, and Dan, you, you, you made this happen with the studio suit. The best way to handle uh, migrating noise is to think of treating noise that's attempting to come in 
uh, by using a catcher's mitt. That's the best analogy that I've ever really been able to, to put to this thing. If you think about it, a hundred mile an hour fastball comes at you. You've got a catcher's mitt. How does that not breaking that guy's hand? Right? Well, it has several, several layers of very soft and pliable stuff going yeah. on before it hits the palm of his hand. And if you treat sound mitigation the same way and you allow those low, those low frequency vibrations to hit those objects and to vibrate against them in a way much like a pillow, right? We've seen it in every gangster movie ever when someone uses one as a silencer, for instance, right? But the reality of the situation is you're catching the sound. If you have hard, if you have hard, you know, stable, fixed objects, they just don't do a good job. And decoupling them from those structures really helps you a lot, obviously, because the vibration can't migrate into whatever structure is attached to it. So that's, that's, that's a pretty good sum up of that. Yeah. Um, there's one last one from Austin Rising. A, a, a major brown nose question. Apparently a here, fan right? of yours. He says, oh, right. what okay, is it awesome. like being what? omnipotent with all things recording and gear related? Oh, wise one. Is it ever boring to slum it with us mere mortals who sometimes don't know the difference between our output and our input levels? Please do tell God. <laughs> uh, this has been a running joke, and it's been one of those things where we just kind of go back and forth online, and I don't know what to say about Austin other than, dude, you're funny. You're very, very funny, and... um I, I don't know. He's a great guy and he's, he's always throwing that stuff out there. So I guess the only way I can answer the question is to say, stay tuned. <laughs> you know, we're going to keep bringing you this information. Uh, the people who are on this video right now care very much. I know this for a fact about you guys and continuing to educate you to the best of our ability and get you sounding the absolute best that you can and uh, hoping that you succeed with everything it is that we pass on. Well, we really appreciate you coming on, Tim. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, how would they do that aside from grabbing your arm? They can go to info at VOTechGuru.com. Okay, info at VOTechGuru.com. And George and I are both on OpenCoaches.com. So if you want to go there and hire us for something, you can hit us up there. Uh, easy enough to do. And uh, yeah, you know, if you send me a quick email, you want to have a quick Skype discussion uh, about what you're dealing with, and then we can kind of create a plan for you. That's another thing that you can do as well. Just reach out to me on email and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Super duper. Tim, thanks for being with us tonight. It's been very enlightening. Come back again. Yeah. We'll get you on for an audio table or an audio masters round table. That there would be go. interesting. All right. Thanks again. All right. We'll be right back and we'll uh, wrap things up right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. It's so great to see that you got it here in person. So tell us what the Smash Mouse can do for a voice actor in their studio. Yeah, so uh, thanks again, George. So Smash Mouse is a universal pedal to control your device's hands free. So it's a fully functioning mouse. You put your foot on it, rotate your ankle, smash it in the middle for left click. But you can also hit this mode button and now it's playback. So it's all your playback toolbar functionality. So if you want to record, now it's just one kick to click and you can do all your hands-free animation and all that passion that your voiceover community uses and only use this to control their device hands-free. Excellent, now how does it connect to your system? Uh, great, so it's Windows and Mac OS compatible. It has USB and Bluetooth connectivity. Ah, okay. So for those people who like to really get away from their computer and be active, they can use the Bluetooth connection. Uh, it's got a 12-hour rechargeable battery life as well. 
Very cool. How are we going to get this thing and, and well, how long so, do we have to wait? <laughs> yeah, so right now we're about to launch a Kickstarter campaign. So you can go to uh, www.smashmouseusa.com, sign up for our email database. We'll keep you in the loop, but literally in a couple of weeks, we're going to launch Kickstarter. And here's what's really important. We're ready to go on production. We just need the support of a community like yours, get a little funding to get that first model out there, and we'll have it to market in four to six months. So the other progress part for all of your listeners is instead of being $149.99, which will be our retail, you can get it for 80 bucks on Kickstarter. Woo, that's fantastic, man. So yeah. Well, it's so great to see you up here in the main hall where Yeah, everybody we're is, moving on up in the, the world, right? And yeah, the, and the product and is in your hand. Reconnecting with the great guy. So thanks, George. Yeah, really appreciate great it. Great seeing you again. Let's go to the next booth. Woohoo! Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voiceover Body Shop. I love when they talk BS about you. All righty. We're back to say goodbye. <laughs> um, fascinating. Tim Tippett has a lot of information there. And, uh, you know, he... He knows what he's talking about. There's no question. He's got oh, yeah. years and years of experience, and we really appreciate him joining us and uh, giving his uh, giving us his thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. uh, next week on this show, we have Roger Rose. Sweet. Yes, Roger. Very entertaining. The guy's been in show business for a long time. He was born into it, so he's got many great stories. He knows his stuff when it comes to promo, commercial, you name it. Yep. It's going to be fun. On the 26th of February, mm -hmm. totally opposite, totally yeah. different to topic, yeah. Tracy Lindley will be here. She'll talk about uh, her LinkedIn, uh, professional LinkedIn mm. uh, marketing techniques, which are fascinating. Awesome. Uh, March 5th, because I have to pronounce this, Carlos Alizraki will be here. Yeah. All right. Uh, great talent. Uh, March 12th, Mike Delgado. Wow. Mike Delgado is coming on? Yep. Holy crap. This yep. is, we've got quite a run of... Vios techie dudes. I know. And then March 19th, Dan O'Day, for those of you who are familiar oh, with, man. with his stuff. Then on March 26th, which is a long time in the future, we'll, we'll have been it'll, in Atlanta. And, it'll be here. And, and gone. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Rena Gupta, who is a great rhino otolaryngologist. Rhino <laughs> Ear, nose, and throat doctor, especially for voice actors. ENT, yeah. Yeah, over at uh, Osborne Head and Neck, and uh, that'll be fascinating. Looking forward nice. to talking to her again. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Well, they aren't the ones that are on that list, so let's okay. pop over to the email real quick and take a look, shall we? We shall. We need some donor of the week, week music one of these days. Uh, Blair Siebert, one of our regular <laughs> donors on the show. Andrew Kaufman. Um, we're in the money. There you go. <laughs> Brian Roush is a donor of, the, donor of the show. He does it regularly every month. Graham Spicer, a, Spicer? <laughs> Graham Spicer, a monthly donor. Eric Aragoni, pretty much a weekly sponsor for of the show. Years. For years. For a couple of years now. Super kind. Um Jack DeGolia, even though he does the show notes every show, still gives us money. It's really nice of you. Thanks. And Joseph Harrison uh, is donating to the show. So very helpful, very much appreciated. Those little extra bits of money go a long way to just make sure we keep our bills paid and keep the bandwidth flowing and all that. We do appreciate it. If you want to be one of those donors, click the donation button. I think it's below the show these days. Um, you can... Give us money over at VOBS.TV. All right. And, of course, you know how to get a hold of us, georgethetech.com. That's right. I'm I'm there because well, you, you break broke stuff. Something. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, let's see here. We have the show logs. We just talked about that. Mm -hmm. They're on there. They're fabulous. Help you find what, what you're looking for uh, when you watch the show on YouTube. If you didn't happen to watch it live or mm -hmm. listening to it not live you can get the show notes and take you right through it real quick yeah uh you can get the podcast version on you can get it on itunes stitcher Pi type in vobs into your podcasting software and you will find this show i promise you all right um the show we do the show live yeah i mean some of right you are listening now, we're live maybe you're listening and you want to see the show live 6 p.m pacific time at vobs.tv and uh, show us your booths. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, you know, we've Chris Tom's booth there. I mean, this is fabulous. They did a great job on this. This is the perspective we're looking for. Send us 
pictures of your studios and you could have us sitting in yours. Doesn't it look like we're actually in his studio? It's, it's <laughs> I, kind of- I kid you not. When we, when we sat down and the cameras came on and everything was up and we saw our shot of the first time, yeah. I was like, wait, what? Where am I? <laughs> it fooled me. And I, I'm sitting in a green screen cove and it still freaked me out. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. It is. Uh, and send them to the guys at VOBS.com. TV. And you can send emails to that same address if you want to okay. be here in the audience, live, in person. Right. Or just, if you have a question during the week. Or if you have a question, just if you want to know anything, just right. send it to the guys at VOBS.TV. Yeah. Well, and someone will read it somewhere. Uh, thank our sponsors. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. vo to go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos for providing that uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth for you guys tonight. <laughs> Gotta make sure you got the bandwidth. Uh, thanks to Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage tonight after a weird week in Florida moving her mother. It's a long, long story. Um, our producer, Catherine Curridan, for doing this fabulous lineup of guests that I we've know. got coming up over the next That's couple of months. Uh, we had Paul Stefano was That's in the right. chat room tonight. He Thank did you. a bang up job. Good job, Paul. We really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And of course, our floor and technical director, Susan Merlino, for another outstanding job behind the scenes. All right. Oh, and Jack DeGoli, of course, for the show notes. And Lee Penny. For being Lee Penny. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, we know it's not an easy business. You got to be good at what you do. Your sound has to be right. We're here for you to make sure that your sound sounds the way it's supposed to. So join us every week here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I am Dan Leonard. And I am George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS.